Welcome to regional semifinal coverage of the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. We're at Chesapeake Energy Arena in Oklahoma City. Sweet 16 matchup number one as Washington from the Pac-12 takes on Mississippi State, the Bulldogs out of the SEC. Later on tonight, a much anticipated game between Baylor and Louisville. This is the only regional where the top four seeds got through and uh, the winner will take on whoever comes out of the Lexington Regional. And we welcome you to Oklahoma City. Pam Ward along with Hall of Fame coach Gail Guestencourt. Boy, we've got talent on both sides here, but particularly for the University of Washington, Kelsey Plum leading the nation in scoring might be the best player in the country. Well, I think she is, and I'm going to tell you why. It's because of her basketball IQ and how she reads and breaks down the defense. Here we've got a dribble handoff with Osahor. She sees there's no help, there's no head. She's wide open. She takes the shot, nails it. Now we've got Osahor setting a drag screen for her. This time, OU, they switch that defense, but they stay home in the corner shooter. She sees that, attacks that post player for a layup. Now OU is really concerned. Everybody's guarding Plum. They all help over. They leave the shooter to help on penetration. She finds her, nails the three. Oklahoma gave up 108 points in that game last week. And Chantel Osahor, Kelsey Plum's running mate, leading the nation in rebounding. This is the first time that two teammates have led in both scoring and rebounding in the same year. Let's take a look at tonight's Capital One starting lineups. Plum and Osahor, the two stars for Washington. For the third straight game, Vic Schaefer going with a shaken up Mississippi State lineup as uh, Morgan William is the only regular starter who is still in the starting position. For more on the head coaching buddies we have in this matchup, let's go to Kaylee Hartung. Well, Pam, there have been no secrets as these two teams have game planned for each other. Both head coaches say they know not only what the opposing coach is going to do, but how he's going to do it because they are great friends. They've got a relationship that dates back almost 20 years. It started just before they both joined Gary Blair's staff at Arkansas. They've got kids the same age. They like to vacation together and golf together. Well, there are a couple good golf courses close to Starkville. So Vic Schaefer invited my neighbors down this summer to play some golf and talk some basketball. Now, Schaefer talked about his defense while neighbors, his offense. Now, with each having that information on hand, they face off against one another. Now, moments ago, we were let inside both coaches' locker rooms. You're the most successful class in the history of the school for one reason and one reason only. is because you have embraced working. Nothing's been given to you. Now we're still fighting for respect. There's only 16 teams left, and you're one of them. And it's going to get harder. But you got to stay together more than ever when those hard times come. They're coming. They're coming. You recognize it before I do? You take the timeout. Don't wait on me. Okay? Y'all use three timeouts in practice? You can use one tonight if you need to. Okay? Don't wait on me. If y'all send something on the floor, let's get it fixed immediately. Any questions? All right, let's go. Mike Neighbors, his star is Kelsey Plum, the senior from Poway, California, who earlier this year broke Jackie Stiles' all-time scoring record, and in her last game against Oklahoma, Jackie Stiles' single-season record, 1,080 points in the season. That is Blair Schaefer, number one for Mississippi State, the daughter of the head coach, Vic Schaefer, but she's just not in there because she's daddy's little girl. She has played really well since she was put into the starting lineup. Well, she has. She's been leading this team, and, and really, it's like she's just been waiting for her opportunity to succeed. Don't leave her open for a three, because she's nailing it. Morgan William in white, the diminutive point guard for Mississippi State. Gets it over to Chapel and McCowan. That could be a matchup problem for Missis for uh, Washington, but uh, Tierra misses the first shot, and here's Plum. You just see a horn set right away. And you can see switching on defense. They're man-to-man, -man, Mississippi State is, but they switched on that screen. And Katie Collier was fouled right off the bat by Rashonda Johnson. And Kelsey Plum knows a lot of basketball and uh, talked about Vic Schaefer calling him a defensive guru, watching film, the intensity and pressure they put on opponents. So she was really looking forward to this matchup. And everybody's looking forward to Kelsey Plum hitting threes. Well, she was wide open there. Set a little double screen on that baseline. Nice out of bounds play, but you cannot leave Kelsey Plum open. Averaging 33 and a half points per game in the first couple of games of this tournament. Washington doubling down on McCowan. Johnson left open and she matches Plum. And some 
pressure from the Bulldogs. And Mississippi State talked about the fact they don't want to allow Washington to just walk the ball up the floor, want to make them work for everything. So we're going to see full court pressure all night long. Harry McDonald had to float it because McCowan was closing in. And now Blair Schaefer with the basketball. This is, by the way, the first time that Mississippi State and Washington have ever played a game in women's basketball. William gets it inside to McCowan. Osahor with the defensive assignment. McCowan is able to tip it over to a teammate, and they get a fresh 30. And you can see the Mississippi State game plan. They're going inside early. Morgan William backs it up. Romeo chasing Schaefer, who has been terrific. Misses that shot. Osahor gets tangled up with Chapel, and the ball goes over to the Huskies. So again, the third straight game as Vic Schaefer's team lost to South Carolina in the SEC tournament, and Morgan William the only constant, and he went with four players who barely started this year. And he said part of that was for what was going on on the court, and some of it was for what was going on off the court. Said he had to straighten some things out, but they've had success with this lineup. And you will see his usual starters getting starters minutes even though they were coming off the bench and that is a fearless freshman by the name of arian mcdonald she's five seven freshman out of fresno california and she had 18 points and was three for three from the three in that oklahoma game we have had nothing but three so far mcdonald who is maybe their best perimeter defender swipes it away romeo gets it back to mcdonald left open for three why not but Trickles in off the front iron. And we saw this against OU. She came out and really set the tone offensively. She got in foul trouble, but she scored early and often. Chapel kicks it out to Johnson. Just a little bit too strong, and Plum is unable to gather the rebound. Marion McDonald coming out strong for the second straight game. She is. She is so confident. She said, I thought I'd be nervous coming out into the NCAA tournament, but I haven't been. Hits them back to back. She's feeling good. Hitting them at a 32% clip, but is up that during the postseason. Oh, actually with Mississippi State after the ball went out of bounds. And a charge call. It was drawn by McDonald. <laughs> She's doing it on both ends of the floor. And they're gar not guarding Richardson out there. And she just tried to take it in anyway, trying to use her athleticism. But definitely fouls, offensive foul. Yana Richardson called for her first foul. And now McDonald as they trust the freshman to bring it up the court. Neighbors, the head coach for Washington, always talks about who will be the third component to give them points. He can count on Plum and Osahor every game. And McDonald has been that third player so far in this tournament. Here's Osahor down low. Took a couple of steps, no walk. They're going to call a foul. And Osahor, she's deceptive. You know, we know she can shoot that three, but she'll put it on the deck and drive from the high post area as well. That is two on Brianna Richardson. And that's what happened again in that OU game. She got their big post player in foul trouble, and it was an entirely different team. Kelsey Plum, two for two from three. And Vic Schaefer has put in Amisha Williams, number four in white with the ball, a freshman from Gulfport, Mississippi. A little bit of a change up. She has not gotten a lot of minutes this season. Rashonda Johnson, she is a kid who, when she gets going, can really score the transfer from Oklahoma State. Yeah, she is definitely a streaky shooter, but when she's feeling it, and she is feeling it, she can score quickly. Washington, thanks to four threes, leading 12 to five. Osahor, McCowan comes out on her. Osahor still thought about taking a three and then drove right by her. 
So much fun to watch and so smart. And Coach Neighbors talks about the fact she has the highest IQ of any player he's seen. Leads the country not only in rebounding, but in double-doubles with 29 this season. Look at Plum just come over and crush the ball. Schaefer left open, and that's an easy one for her. Yeah, Romeo got caught. She thought she was going to head down the floor. Cherry pick. Mississippi State made her pay. First bucket for Schaefer, who scored 39 points in the first two games of this tournament, just 36 in the prior 16 games. So really coming on, Kelsey Plum dribbled it off her ankle. And Blair Schaefer, great hustle, tried to save it in bounds. But it goes over to the Huskies, some hot shooting early as they lead it by seven. Kelsey Plum and her teammates having fun on their way to and then at shoot around this morning. Plum, the uh, captain, can have fun on the court and also can do damage on the court. <laughs> well, that was right off an out of bounds. First out of bounds play. Excellent call. Excellent finish. And then she's hitting McDonald for the three. She's getting everybody involved. You gotta love it. When your best player and your leader can have fun before the game, make everybody feel loose, and then when the whistle blows and the jump goes up, is ready to play. It gives everybody confidence. Plum has started every game of her career and has been a captain all four seasons. Osahor feeling confident, driving, and Tumwaya Puri, number 45 in white, is checking in for Mississippi State and started 33 games this year before coming off the bench the last couple. Not much of it as much of an offensive threat as McCowan. Williams can't get it, and it ping-pongs off of Romeo. It stays with Mississippi State. Haley Hartung was just listening in to Mississippi State's huddle. Well, you saw that Washington out-of-bounds play where Kelsey Plum nailed that three. Well, Vic Schaefer brought that up in his huddle and said, you all have no communication on the court, and you're giving the best player in the country a wide-open three, referring to that play. He said, it's just not okay. You can't play on this level and make those mistakes. Now, this team, this Mississippi State team in the Sweet 16 for back-to-back -back trips for the first time in school history, but Schaefer having to remind them what it takes to play on this level. Well, and I think sometimes... When you're a little stressed out, you're a little nervous, all of a sudden you get quiet. And that is not a good thing. That's the worst thing that can happen when you're on the court. You've got to communicate. Dominique Dillingham, number double zero, guarding Kelsey Plum. She's a very good defender in for the first time. Another one of the usual starters who's been coming off the bench. And also more known for her three-point shooting, is pretty crafty underneath as well. And she can beat you in so many ways, and we're seeing tonight she's taking the ball inside, driving, now scoring on the low block. She's not intimidated by anybody. Washington with a 16 to 7 lead. Schaefer still in the game, drives on Romeo. Tough shot, rebounded and fouled. And an opportunity for Williams to shoot free throws. You gotta love Osahor down on that block, creating some space, goes right to the rim, uses that spin move. Just so smart. She's going to find a way to take advantage of you. Now, plenty of us have seen that sports science piece that John Brinkus did last season where he really broke down the mechanics of Osahor's unique three-point shot. But John John was proud of her ability to make that shot. But said all, when she started getting all of that attention, she said it was all anybody wanted to ask her about. So this year, she really feels like she's been able to show people there's more to her game than just that three-point shot, as you guys alluded to. And, and Mike Neighbor says this is a player who you really can't appreciate until you see her live, which we're getting to see right now. Well, that's true. And she said her goal was to lead the nation in rebounding. That was her one goal, and she's accomplished that goal. And really, we have not seen a player like her. When you look at her ability to shoot the three, rebound, and also, she's a great passer. She averages over four assists per game, second only to Kelsey Plum on her team. You can see Mississippi State now has brought Victoria Vivians in. So most of their starters in right now. They're normal starters. Um, gets fouled by Akori. Kimwe Akori, a senior from Lagos, Nigeria, who has not seen her family in about a half a dozen years. And now Kelsey Plum can get another record. 
gets that free throw, and now one free throw away from breaking a 33-year-old record for most free throws made. Kelsey Plum has the most made career free throws in the history of the NCAA. Lori Bauman sees another record go away. And the records just continue to fall. You can see the Huskies now, they've gone into a zone, 2 3 zone, a tandem. Dillingham gets Vivian's miss. Vivian's the leading scorer on this team with the ball in her hands. Anna Johnson, number one for the Huskies, checking in. Mississippi State with a deeper pinch. And Vic Schaefer already used, has used it pretty liberally. Corey. That's a good matchup of Corey against Osahor. In that time, Corey was so deep. She had two feet in the paint, did her work early. Osahor needs to get her out, out of the paint area. Corey last week against DePaul, 12 points and nine rebounds. And she came off the bench, did that all in 20 minutes. Corral, wild shot. Osahor, who else gets the rebound and the putback? Osahor with six points and one rebound. So she is 11 rebounds away from the single season Pac-12 record. Okori up strong again and draws the foul from Osahor. Sweet 16 rolls on tonight at 9 Eastern, the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Texas and Stanford on ESPN and right here on ESPN2. We will have Louisville and Baylor after this game is over. Both games streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Baylor and Louisville played in this building four years ago. It was a very infamous upset as Louisville took out the number one seeded and only once beaten Baylor Bears. And talking to the Louisville players, they said, we want history to repeat itself. <laughs> They are ready to go. They're excited, they're confident. But Baylor, that's a tough task and a tall task. One of the tallest teams in the country. Kalani Brown and Mom Premier who comes off the bench. Should be a great matchup. Nosahor, good closeout by Vivians to stop her from triggering the three. And dribbled into a double team and then threw it away to Dillingham. Washington does not turn the ball over very much. Yeah, only 10 turnovers a game. One of the tops in the nation. Third fewest in the nation. Long three from Vivian's, and it was almost down. A Corey could not hang on to it. Kelsey Plum driving into the paint and uses the right hand for offhand. Corey. They've made a concerted effort since Corey came into the game to go right after Osahor, and they have picked up one foul on Chantel. Under a minute to go in the first quarter. Erin McDonald coming in for Heather Corral. And you can see Mississippi State again picking up full court, trying to just wear down the Washington guards. They do play a lot of minutes. Kelsey Plum never seems to get tired. That neighbor says he knows that the whole team is tired when Kelsey's cheeks turn red. But they usually don't, because usually she can go and go. That ball is out of bounds to the Bulldogs. Washington cooling off just a little bit. Five of their first seven and missed four of their last six, but still hanging on to the seven point cushion. And the Mississippi State, their, their posts are getting great looks. They've got to knock those down. Yeah, for Corey, a perfect example. On the run, Romeo's first chance at a three. 84% of the shots she takes are from three. And the ball goes right back over to the Huskies. Corey goes out, and they bring in their other 
center, Tiara McCowan, who is the sixth woman of the year. Corey gets a talking to with head coach Vic Schaefer. Yeah, he's not happy, and I don't blame him. They're getting good looks. Just relax, take your time, and put it down. Corey usually knocks him down. One misfires. And that is the end of the first quarter. Washington relied on the three early. Kelsey Plum not disappointing so far. She's got eight points. She's looking good. Nailing the three, finding her teammate, doing it all. Well, welcome back to Oklahoma City with Mike Neighbors. Coach, your two stars getting it done as you would expect them to, but what's your reaction to your freshman guard, McDonald, getting it done on both ends of the floor? She's been fearless since the day she stepped on campus, and you have to play fearless against these guys. If you show any sign of fear, uh, Vic Schaefer defense is going to eat you up, and she hasn't shown us uh, one sign of that. But your defense has shown up as well, holding them to just 4 of 16 shooting. What's been the key there? Still what we do. Our field goal percentage defense, if you look at it, it's pretty good. Uh, maybe a little bit better than theirs even. So I just told our kids to be doing what we've been doing since day one. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Coach Neighbors is absolutely right. As uh, they leave their, leave their opponents only shoot 37% against Washington and some balance from the big three. Yeah, and Kelsey got them started, but then you see Arian McDonald, again, fearless. That's the word we used when we saw them last week. Does not play like a freshman, and she's showing why she made the Pac-12 All-Freshman team. Did not play the first seven games, had been injured, but has been a terrific starter for the Huskies. Some great speed, and you see Mississippi State not shooting the ball well at all. Just four of 16. And they have not led Washington leading from the get-go. Washington has gone back to their man-to-man. -man. They switched up defenses, so they're making them think. Jaffa with the miss, McDonald gets it, and she likes to go. Plum hanging out on the left, and now comes up towards Osahor, being dogged by Dillingham. Now Dillingham basically is face guarding her. She's a two-time All-SEC defensive player. Shot clock getting mighty skinny. Plum elevates and air balls it. They're a very good defensive sequence from Mississippi State. Dillingham just all over Plum. And, and with Dillingham basically face guarding Plum, I'd like to see Washington get Plum going on some backdoor cuts with Osahor making that pass. Osahor. Terrific passer. And now defending McCowan. Nice cut to the hoop by Chapel, and McCowan found it. And that's part of McCowan's progress this year. She's become a good passer out of those double teams. Lead has been cut to five. Washington has led by as many as nine. Morgan William being a pest. And now Plum dishes it off to Osahor. Kelsey Plum last week against Oklahoma in the game that got them here had 11 assists, and miraculously, as a senior, it was her first double-double. Yeah, and Vic Schaefer, I was watching him on the sidelines, he is not happy. He thought that was a charge. Happier now that Vivian's has knocked down a long two. First points for Vivian's. And right away, Mississippi State picks up in that full-court press, gets a turnover. So we're starting to see the defense have some effect. And the usual starters on the floor now for Mississippi State, with the exception of McCowan and Chapel. And they have, especially with Dillingham out there, the defensive intensity is picked up. See if they can continue to work the ball inside. And if McCowan can have some more luck turning and scoring. Good screen to rid Vivians of Romeo, but she airballed it. And here's Kelsey Plum. Plum guarded by Vivians now, drives it and draws the foul. And she's just so crafty. 
And we've seen different players, and that's what Vic Schaefer, he's got different players defending her. She's had Dillingham on her, she's had Vivian's on her, giving her some different looks. Vivian's picks up her first foul, Osavor. Right to Plum off the inbound. Plum missed it, and McCowan took the rebound away from Osavor. And that was a smart play offensively. Morgan William was on her. She needs to finish that. Plum guarded by Dillingham with the spin, puts it up. And Kelsey is gone a little cold. Vivians gets fouled by Collier. And that is the second foul on Katie Collier. And I like that from Vivians. You know, she just shot an air ball from the three, so take it to the rim. Try to score, try to get to the free throw line, get your confidence back. Yeah, Vivians has not been shooting well. Just three of 13 against DePaul. In our last game. Coverage of the Division I Men's Basketball Championship Regional Semifinals continues tonight on CBS and TBS. For more information on game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. Williams gets one out of two. And now more full court pressure by the Bulldogs. Husky fans wanting a foul. And it's getting physical. Plum has not scored in 10 minutes. And here's the ball screen with Osahor. These two work together so well. Hannah Johnson missed that one badly. And Mississippi State can make this a one possession ball game. coach to get the call finds a little bit of space and is able to get her own long rebound and looks back to get another play call Murder by McDonald and they're gonna get plumb for the bump on Vivians first foul on Kelsey plumb Kelsey Plum gets in foul trouble, which she is a, not with one. They lose, literally. They have five losses, and in all five of those games, Kelsey had at least four fouls. And that's why if I'm Mississippi State, I continue to drive at her. McCowan, nice on the putback. Mississippi State only down two. Good contingency of fans making the trip from Starkville, many of them on their feet. McDonald charges. And there's Dillingham taking the charge. Showing why she's all defensive team in the SEC once again. Steps up. And McCowan, great job on the offensive glass. And this sophomore, this is where they have the advantages going inside. They've got so much depth. They continue to bring post players in off the bench. And really, the only great inside presence for Mississippi State is also her. Quick double on Vivians, and it doesn't matter. And we are tied. And a nice play, a nice set called from the bench. Get Vivians down on that low block and let her post up. An 11 to 2 Mississippi State run, including the last seven. Elsie Plum has had trouble finding any kind of shooting space and drew the foul that time. She's really good at doing that. Elsie's missed her last five field goals. That one not counting, of course, because she was fouled. Last she, field goal, excuse me, was with 6.22 left to go in the first quarter. This is an eternity for her not to score. Yeah, and she got good shots early, open shots early. But since that time, since the timeout when Vic Schaefer really called his team out for not communicating, she has not had one easy look at the basket. Kelsey Plum, 38 points in the win against Oklahoma, including six threes, and as they scored 108 points to get to Oklahoma City. 
but she has struggled. You can see Vivian's posting up again. Oh, goodness, give her the ball. She's got Kelsey Blum on her. She's posted her up. Give her the ball inside. Scored eventually. Vivian's, how about seven points off the bench? And this is exactly what Mississippi State needed. They've been winning without her playing with confidence. But you get her going, and it takes their game to another level. Kelsey Plum has drawn another foul. Timeout on the floor. Good one going on. It's all tied up. The Bulldogs have gotten hot. Victoria Vivians, Chapel, they're all leading the charge. Washington ice cold in the second quarter. Well, I, I give credit to Mississippi State's defense. They've really upped the pressure. Once Vivian, Vivians and Dillingham got in, it changes their defense. And Mississippi State's bringing that pressure, but you didn't feel any pressure in that last Washington huddle. That might up the ante a little bit. Neighbors telling his team, hey, we're in great shape. It's gotten kind of hard, but it hadn't gotten real hard yet. You got to stay together. And he told Hannah Johnson, the sophomore forward, she needs to have more confidence on the floor. She can't hesitate. Really focused on with his post players on moving their feet and said, we've got to get Chantel some more touches because they know State doesn't have an answer for her. And right away, Kaylee, they do just that as Osafor is able to beat McCowan to the bucket. Blair Schaefer hit a three on the so the uh, previous trip that gave Mississippi State its first lead of the game. And it's hard to double down on Osahor when she, you see she's putting the ball on the deck, but you can't double down because there's, she's surrounded by shooters. And that was too easy as they again got it inside to McCowan. Osahor and Plum have combined for 18 of Washington's points, make it 20 of Washington's points. Melissa Hoare wanted the ball. That's what she does. But she has been off so far. That is her second missed three. Blair Schaefer, who passes out to William. Mississippi State has never been to an Elite Eight. They would get there with a win tonight. Washington going to the Final Four last year. William off the curl, and McCowan with great Position, Chapel picks her up. And Mississippi State really just dominating on the boards. They're plus nine on the boards right now. And gets it out to Osahor. Got McCowan up in the air, and McCowan fouled her as Osahor tried to get around her. And looking inside, McCowan, nice play, just an up screen for McCowan. It's a battle of the bigs down inside. She can just dribble. She's sizing you up, sees what she has, and scores it. Most of about five inches shorter than McCowan. Very quick. Still hasn't hit a three. That was a wide open look. Chantel usually hits him on about a 38% clip. Vivians! Nothing but net. That's a long two. And Mike Neighbors calls a timeout. The Bulldogs are on fire. Once trailing by nine, they lead by seven. And Victoria Vivian, this is what her fans have been waiting to see, that confidence where she can come in transition, pull up, and nail that shot. It's been a dry spell for her, but she's got the confidence. She's got the mojo going. Vivian's coming off the bench for the third straight game. When we talked to her yesterday, she said, we have 10 starters, and everybody's certainly saying the right thing. Among them, Dominique Dillingham, that they, it really doesn't matter. Just so they get out there, and they contribute, and they win, and they've been doing that so far. Coming up on the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report, Maria Taylor will get you updated on these stories. A brand new challenge for Notre Dame without Turner. And the question on a lot of people's lips, especially here in Oklahoma City, can Louisville do it again and upset top seed Baylor? We're going to find out. Can't wait for that one. That will be coming up on ESPN2 after this one. Kelsey Plum, no shots in the last five minutes, and she took a couple of shuffle steps. And she's a little discombobulated. Think about Kelsey Plum. She still has 10 points. And that's subpar for her, averaging 32 a game. 
And coming out of the timeout, Mississippi State, or excuse me, Washington changes defenses, goes back to the two tandem 2-3. Two, Schaefer left wide open. That one was short, but she took the rebound away from Corral. Difference between a 2-3 and a tandem 2-3. Yeah, tandem 2-3 is just going to put more pressure on that point guard. But as soon as they make that wing pass, then they just settles into a 2-3. Vivian's misses. Also, who are able to battle for the board. She's got four rebounds. Plum pulls up. And misses again. First field goal attempt in a while. Chapel, nice pass to find her underneath. Nice. Yeah, Chapel. Yeah, nice pass and an excellent catch. That was a bullet. Half a dozen for Chapel, and just like that, it's a nine point lead for Mississippi State. Plum guarded by Chapel now. Osavor finally gets a three. They need her to hit those. And you can see Washington's gone to really their two-man game with Osahor and Plum, the last three possessions. So when they need to score, those two are going to have the ball. Schaefer over Plum. Gets the three right back. There's Schaefer averaging only five points per game. Really coming on in this NCAA tournament, given the opportunity to start. A two second difference between the game and shot clocks. Plum misses again, and there's no one there to rebound it in black. Morgan William gets it over to Vivians, puts it up, and it just is off the back rim. But what a second quarter for Mississippi State. They were down seven going into the second quarter. Washington scored only nine points in the last 10 minutes. And Mississippi State takes a 38 to 29 lead into the locker room. Finishing on an 11 to 2 run. Down by nine in the first quarter. They now take a lead into the locker room. Here is Kaylee with Victoria Vivians. Victoria, how do you describe what you all were able to do to go on that 11 to 2 run to close it out here? Um, um, I came off the bench. You know, our, our coach was telling me to go in and fix what was broken. So I came in being aggressive because I saw my teammates want to attack them, so I came in and being aggressive and tried to get my uh, teammates involved. What does it mean when you are able to do that? What kind of player are you when you make those things happen? Um, it means a lot because um, I'm coming out more confident, uh, shots going in, and uh, my teammates getting the ball again, and uh, we scoring, so, and then defending, so all that put together made us go on and run. Thanks, Victoria. Thank you. Victoria Vivians was the fixer for sure as she came off the bench to score nine points. A great second quarter for the Bulldogs. Victoria Vivians and company take the lead. Time now for the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. Maria Taylor there when we come back. And game one of two coming your way from Oklahoma City in the Sweet 16. Mississippi State was down seven after one quarter, but now they have a lead as we head into the second half. Pam Ward along with Hall of Fame coach Gail Gestenkors and things really started out well for Washington with their big two of Plum and Osahor. Well it was you know and they had it going on early which is important. They set the tone and you saw Plum right off the bat come off of that screen nail the three and then she drove in found Osahor drive and dish and the finish. But then the second quarter, things started to turn a little bit. And it happened when Vivians came into the game. Her, she, along with Dillingham, really with their defensive pressure. But you saw the ball movement that they had, wide open for Schaefer. And then Vivians, being smart, taking the ball to the basket. And there you see 25 to 9 advantage to Mississippi State. 15 bench points. In fact, no, no one on the bench has scored for Washington. Let's go to Vic Schaefer in the locker room a few minutes ago. Stay after them, keep attacking. They miss, we keep running. We get a steal, let's keep pushing it. We uh, we only had three turnovers, they only had five. Have you got another half in you? Yeah. Let's go. Mississippi State trying to get to its first Elite Eight in history. Kelsey Plum with the basketball in her hands, the nation's leading scorer, just 10 points in the first half. She averages 32 per game. 
Only three players scored for Washington. Osahor, McDonald, and Plum. And a good way to get things started for Kelsey Plum to get her involved. For more on Washington, let's go to Kelly Hartung. Well, Pam, stay together was the message I heard Neighbors telling his team at the end of that first half. It was also the message he relayed again at the half to his team. As I'm told, he said very simply, relax, rebound, and stay together. Well, we saw <laughs> they're staying together, but I'll tell you what, Mississippi State is playing like a well-oiled machine right now, finding one another, getting the ball inside, and then playing that defense. It's a little bit late on that by Schaefer coming over. She's still moving. Good call. The so Schaefer called for the block. That is her first personal foul. Amy Collier picking up the basketball, averaging six and a half points per game. And she did not score in the first half. Plum gets by McCowan and finishes with her offhand, her right hand. And this is what you would expect the WBCA Player of the Year to do. And the ESPNW National Player of the Year, the first time the University of Washington has had any women's basketball player be named National Player of the Year. And we have a feeling that she has more to come. Plum gets the rebound. Which did it get Schaefer, the spin, and then the ball goes out of bounds, stays with the Huskies. And this is when Plum is at her best. You see that little step up screen by Osahor, and it allows her, if you allow her to go left, she's so difficult to defend, and she's got that step through move. You don't see many guards run it, you see a lot of posts. She probably learned it from Osahor. Osahor backing down McCowan and then got rid of her, left it short, two tries. Make it three, Osahor fouled by McCowan. And that is two on Tierra. Yeah, and I'm not so sure that was a foul. Tierra, she's 6'7", she's just standing there, playing defense. That's all ball, a little bit of the hand there, but not much. And it's heads Osahor to the free throw line. Montel Osahor, the leading rebounder in the country, and Dominique Dillingham is in now. She was the stopper on Plum in the first half, and it didn't take long for Vic Schaefer to get her in. Well, Morgan William was on Plum, and now we're going to see Dillingham on Plum. They actually didn't call the foul on McCallum. They called it on Chapel. Good ball movement by Mississippi State. Dillingham bottled up in the lane. Collier almost forced the turnover. And then Osahor grabs it. Plum, two on three. Dillingham blocked her shot. Great defense by Dominique Dillingham. And that's incredible defense. In transition, it's tough to defend in transition. Tremendous timing on that block. Two-time all-defensive SEC performer. Scored her thousandth point in their last game against DePaul. Brilliant career for her out of Spring, Texas, helping the, really the renaissance of this Mississippi State program. More than a renaissance, they've gone to places they have not gone before with Vic Schaefer. Romeo has not scored yet. She passed up the three. Osahor got McCowan up in the air and missed in the lane. Too much, too much mustard on that to Richardson. Yeah. NIT heads to New York for its Final Four. Semifinal action tips off Tuesday at 7 Eastern. Cal State Bakersfield, Georgia Tech on ESPN. And watch ESPN. ESPN and NCAA.com. All 90 NCAA championships will be explained. Sweet 16 action in Oklahoma City. McCowan reaching in on Osahor. And that will be McCowan's second. And a Corey comes in, Mississippi State's other big, as McCowan takes a seat on the bench. And as you mentioned, Gail, they really have that luxury with O'Corey and McCowan. Washington relying heavily on Osabor underneath. They can get some good minutes out of Hannah Johnson. We have not seen Deja Struther yet, who is a 6'5 center for the Huskies. William gets a break at the point guard position, which doesn't happen often. 
And you can see Dillingham doing such a good job denying on the wing, not letting Plum touch it. But Osahor says, that's okay. I'll take it myself. Osahor, a player that you really cannot appreciate until you see her live. Big body, and yet she could do some very nifty athletic things like we just saw. Schaefer wanted the foul, probably both Schaefer's. Neither Vic nor Blair got it. And here's Osahor again, that spin move. Just so, so tough on the inside, great touch. And then Blair Schaefer, she should know better than take the ball in there. <laughs> She's a three-point shooter. McDonald blocked it away. 13 seconds left on the shot clock for Mississippi State. They trailed by nine in the first quarter. They took a nine-point lead after the half. Winner gets the winner of Baylor-Louisville, our second game coming up. Schaefer off glass. And another excellent out-of-bounds play. Just running a little curl cut by Schaefer. McDonald forcing action, got Holmes to reach. Jasmine Holmes coming off a career-high 14 points in their win against DePaul that sent them here to Oklahoma City. Also Hoare to Plum. Elevates over Holmes and knocks it down. Kelsey Plum off to a great start in the third quarter after a very shaky second quarter. Dillingham behind the back and a blocking foul on Washington's McDonald. And again, Mississippi State running a little weave action and looking to attack the basket. And Plum makes the right read, as always. She's feeling it in the second half. Trying to go to a quarry, and Osahor grabs it for the Huskies. Plum now guarded by Schaefer on the left side. Collier finally scores. So four players have now scored for Washington. Plum, Osahor, McDonald, and now Collier. Yeah, in Washington, they've only played seven players. Mississippi State has played 11. You wonder if this constant pressure and subbing in and out will have an effect at the end of the game on the Washington Huskies. Plum, who was in terrific shape, tried to draw the foul. That didn't work. Kelsey told us she changed her diet last summer, put out a lot of dairy. And she is as fit as she has ever been. Two-point game. Dillingham left open, and she makes a pay. And that's Dillingham's shot, 15-foot pull-up jumper. Her first basket. And Kelsey Plum calls the play. He's running their horn set. Nice to get around the quarry. And Horns is such a good set for them because she makes such good reads. If you have hedge out, they'll find the high-low. If you don't, she's going to go to the basket. Plum has eight points in the third quarter. Rebound off of Osahor with 5.01 left to go. Kelsey Plum, a lot of people think she's got a lot of James Harden in her game. I, I absolutely see that. Great hesitation. Loves to go left. She can go right as well, but almost unstoppable when you let her get to the left. She is a natural left-hander. McDonald, who is really fast. Holmes, a little bit of contact, no foul call. The Mississippi State comes up with it. End-to-end -end action. Victoria Vivians will be checking in for Mississippi State at the next whistle. Richardson left that ball short. It will be Washington basketball when we come back. A good one in Oklahoma City between the dogs and the dogs. Washington has trimmed a nine-point halftime deficit down to two. Vic Schaefer has done great things at Mississippi State now in his fifth year. Before he came to Starkville, 15 seasons under Gary Blair, both Arkansas and Texas A&M, where he was pivotal in their national championship. Hired as Mississippi State's head coach in 2012. Three straight years, he has set school records for wins. Four straight 20-plus win seasons. There had only been four prior 
They also set a school record with 13 wins in the SEC, and Kaylee was eavesdropping in Vicks Huddle. That's right, Pam. He was just all over his bigs for what they are allowing Chantel Osahor to do with her 16 points. He said, you can't play behind zero anymore. You got to get on top and don't let her have it. He said, make her score over you. He looked at his bigs and said, you're 6'7 seven and 6'5. She's 6'2. He wants to see more aggression out of his team to stop the bleeding here. And right now, Corey, the 6'5 center is in there for Mississippi State. Elsie Plum with eight points in this quarter. Do we make it 10? Nope, with the miss. Elsahor gets another rebound, her seventh of the game. Collier, wide open shot, just a little bit too strong. Victoria Vivians checked into the game for the first time in the third quarter, made a huge impact off the bench in the first half. And look for them to post her up again. They posted her in the first half on Plum. She was successful. Backed away that time. Rebound and McDonald couldn't come up with it. Vivians for three this time. And Akori rid herself of Osahor and will be called for the personal foul. And that's where, you know, Vivians, she needs to keep going to the basket. She's one for 14 from the three. And, but down low is a war. Nice job by Osahor. Definitely a push off. Second one on. Chinway Akori. Also her, it's a little shaken up. Washington now in the bonus, and Chantel heads to the free throw line. All Pac-12 performer, one of the captains on this team from Phoenix, Arizona. Tonight after the Sweet 16 game between Texas and Stanford on ESPN, tune into SportsCenter at night with Chris Hassel and Lisa Kearney for all of the Sweet 16 game recaps from both the men and the women. SportsCenter at night streams live on ESPN app and watch ESPN. Also wore one out of two at the line. Washington is a team that is second in the nation in made free throws this year. Osahor and Plum get there a lot, and here's a foul on Plum, who is holding Vivians. That is two on Kelsey. And that's why I continue to go at her if I'm Victoria Vivians. Mississippi State's got some sets where they get her on that low block. Nice job attacking the basket. Vivians, second chance, makes it go. Vivian's into double figures, and the lead goes back up to three. Dillingham with the defensive assignment on Plum did a good job in the first half. Romeo has not hit a three yet for Washington. Usually she's lethal from out there. Yeah, and she hit six for ten against Oklahoma. This time she drives. And a, an oddity for Nat, Natalie Romeo, she actually hit a two. 84% of her shots come from beyond the arc. And it's a one-point game again. Dillingham off the rim. Osahor does what she does best. Leading rebounder in the country this season. Plum, head of steam, avoids traffic and puts it in. Washington back on top. And that's why you have to pick up Plum early. When she gets going in transition, running downhill, she's unstoppable. Dillingham got Collier up in the air and then passed out of it. Now underneath, a Corey muscling against Osahor. And here comes Plum again. McDonald to Romeo. Finally breaks through. Romeo's first three of the night. And Washington's on a roll in the third quarter. And this is when Washington is at their best, in transition, finding their shooters, just letting Romeo spot up. Corey attacks Osahor, and she took a step. Check that they nice called a foul on Akori. Yeah, nice job. Finding Romeo in transition, you can see. Yep, the bench is fired up. Romeo, a transfer from Nebraska. 
who was eligible immediately after she came over from Lincoln. Akori sits down with her three fouls, but they have Tierra McCowan to come in, who was the sixth player of the year in the SEC this season. Mississippi State, the second seed in the SEC tournament, lost to South Carolina in the championship of that tournament for the second straight year. Backdoor cut by Plum, and it was kicked. Washington hangs on with 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Plum asked McDonald, she said, throw it up, I'll go get it. Washington, nine points in the second quarter, 21 so far here in the third. Elsa Hort takes a step around McCowan. Now Morgan Williams gonna settle things down. Point guard has not scored in this game. Schaefer. And that's where you see right now, Mississippi State, they don't have a post player, that high post. They need to be able to hit that shot. And boy, they gave McCowan a lot of room. She took the shot and couldn't hit it. Melissa Hoare with another double-double. What else is new? 30 now on the season to lead the country. Kelsey Plum, a little bit too strong. Under 30 to go in the quarter. Richardson, badly needed shot. And that's a, that's a key shot, and it's gonna continue to be open until she can prove time and again that she can hit that shot. They're just sagging in on McCown. Shot clock is off, home with the ball. Dillingham, great defender on her. Got the switch off the screen. Plum. Charges, three fouls on Kelsey Plum. And they got the switch they wanted. They got the switch up top, so she attacks the basket. Slides out, defense slides over. Morgan William putting her body in the way. Washington up by two. Let's go to Maria Taylor in the studio. Top seed waiting to take on Jeff Walls and the fourth seeded Louisville Cardinals coming up in our nightcap from Oklahoma City. University of Washington down nine at the half and had a big third quarter as we look at tonight's Capital One Cup impact performance. Chantel Osavor coming up big, particularly in the third quarter. Well, she did. She scored inside and out, really took it to the bigs of Mississippi State. Variety of moves on display. She had six rebounds in that quarter as well. Teammates found her. She's on a mission right now. Love the spin move. We've seen it several times. Reads the defense as well as any post player in the country. Kelsey Plum picked up her third foul right before the end of the third quarter. They had a bad second quarter, but rebounded well in the third. Kelsey Plum with 10 points in the third quarter. Chantel. Osahor had six rebounds in the third quarter. Now with her 30th double-double of the season, and right off the bat, McCowan scores and has a chance for a three-point play. And another great call coming out of the quarter break. Just a little up screen. Blair Schaefer does not get enough credit. She is one of the best screeners in the country. Allows her big girl to get the ball in the paint. Third foul on Katie Collier. Let's go back to Haley Hartung. Well, just as you highlight the success that Plum and Osahor had in the third quarter, Vic Schaefer in that last huddle was reminding his team of the success that they had against those two players in the second quarter. He said, get back to doing what you were doing to 0-10 and 10 in that second quarter. And he did point out that 29% shooting Mississippi State had in the third quarter. Very displeased with that. And you mentioned those three fouls that Kelsey Plum has. Yes, Vic Schaefer brought those up, too. He said, contest her, but don't foul her. You know she doesn't want a fourth. Yeah, they want to continue to attack Plum on the defensive end. I'd expect them to drive, continue to drive at her. Plum pulls up, has a block by Dillingham. Every game this year that Kelsey has had four or more fouls they have lost. All five of their losses fall into that category. And that's the second block for Dillingham on Plum. Just tremendous defense. Dillingham at guarding. Or being guarded by Plum. Shot clock into single digits. 
Holmes got to be careful, sticks a hand in Dillingham's face. McCowan was able to go over Osahor's back. Must be nice to be 6'7". <laughs> and that's why the 6'7 sophomore was the SEC's sixth woman of the year. She has improved so much. She, she should have been, she could have been most improved as well if they had that award. Kelsey Plum got bottled up and three seconds is called on her. You don't see that very often. And the reason was she drove in. Usually she can find a teammate for an open three. Mississippi State, and again, excellent job closing down those three-point shooters. Going right back into the Cowan who turns and shoots and scores over Osawar. Mississippi State has scored the first six points of this quarter. And Osawar just now got over midcourt. Plum with the bucket. That's a heck of a shot by Plum. And you got to be aware Dillingham draws charges as well as anybody in the country. So if you lower that shoulder, you might get called for an offensive foul. McCowan has been terrific. She's really starting to put her stamp on this game. Got seven points in this quarter. Lead is five. Boy, Dillingham is blanketing Kelsey Plum. William on the move, bumps into Collier. Tierra McCowan cannot be stopped. Timeout, Washington. But Osahor did not get to half court. There's nobody to keep McCowan off the offensive glass because Osahor is exhausted. Great job by Big T, McCowan. Getting the offensive glass. Making it count. Mississippi State outscoring Washington 11 to two to take this lead in the fourth quarter. The Sweet 16 first of two games coming away from Oklahoma City. We anticipate a great one between Baylor and Louisville. And uh, Chantel Osahor has not been a factor much in this quarter. No, she hasn't, and I think she's fatigued. You know, the bigs have been Going at her for Mississippi State, and you can see her now. Mississippi State, they get a steal. Look at her. She does not get past half court. There's a reason that Tierra McCowan has 11 points in this quarter, five for five. There's nobody down at that end to keep her off the offensive glass. Coach Mike Neighbors puts her right back out there. Chantel Osahor, 17 points and 10 rebounds. And she has played all 33 minutes in this game. Kelsey Plum. Leading scorer in the country this year and also all time in NCAA women's basketball has 22. Dillingham has just been tenacious with her defense. One and done for Washington. McDonald goes out, Collier comes back, or Corral, excuse me, back in for Washington, so they get some more height in there. And look for Mississippi State to continue. They've been running a little weave and then pounding the ball inside. There she is. Plum came over on the double, but McCowan can't be stopped. She's got a double-double now. She has just been unstoppable on the offensive glass. That's her sixth offensive rebound. And they set a little screen for her to get her down on the low block. Misses the first one, stays with it, finishes that second. Her second three-point play of this quarter. Osawar picked up her second foul. And now Washington in trouble down 10. And another forced turnover. And this is where the fatigue becomes a factor. Mississippi State play, has played 11 players. They pressed the entire game, picking up. They're more fresh. Cowan wanting it again. Blair Schaefer left open for three. Collier 
Gets the rebound, now Plum. Trying to make something happen. Romeo, their three-point specialist, badly, badly needed for the Huskies. And a beautiful find by Plum. Bellingham driving on Plum, who has three fouls. Knocked away by Romeo from behind, but it stays with the Bulldogs with 12 seconds left on the shot clock. Victoria Vivian's gonna come back in. And see if they run a loud play for McCowan. There Schaefer gets a well-deserved round of applause by the Mississippi State fans that made the trip. Just what you call poor. Well, if I had 6'7", it's not that <laughs> it's like, it's no wonder you're in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Fourth quarter has belonged to Tierra McCowan. Tyer. With that corral, she with the miss. Washington has no bench points. Morgan Williams slowing it down, using some clock, and this is where you want to stay aggressive. Utilize the clock, but stay aggressive. Vivian swishes one home. We've got the switch on Mississippi State. Look inside now to Osahor. She's got Dillingham on her. Plum pulls up for three. That's another good option. Or shoot the three. <laughs> if you have number 10 on your side, not a bad thing to do. Washington takes a timeout. Down eight. Tonight's tourney snapshot features the Mississippi State Bulldogs at the Oklahoma City Thunder game on Wednesday night. And look who they ran into. Russell Westbrook. We all got a chance to chat with him. The uh, triple-double man. And boy, McCowan, she has been a beast in just she's five minutes of the fourth quarter. Yeah, she's got a double-double, 16 points, five rebounds in just five minutes in this fourth quarter. She has been dominant down low, dominant on the offensive glass. Washington doesn't have anything they can do with her right now. 16 points, five rebounds in the fourth quarter, seven of eight from the floor including two old-fashioned three-point plays. So 16 points in five minutes. She only had 17 points in her first two NCAA games this year against Troy and DePaul. That's doing some work. 6'7", sophomore from Brenham, Texas. Now Morgan William and company can take their time. Eight-point lead. Washington, a team that can explode for points in a hurry, though. And they've gone into their zone. Trying to change the momentum of the game. Good option. The same result. McCowan inside. She is one point away from her career high. Had 25 in a game against Florida in the regular season. Plum. Trying to do it. By herself, left it short. And that's McCowan, she affected her shot there. Six seven has a habit of doing that. So yeah, McCowan has just been absolutely brilliant in this fourth quarter. And now they have Collier behind her. Shot clock into single digits smartly from Mississippi State. The clock is their friend. Vivian's had it halfway down. Collier chased it down and was able to save it into Osahor. Plum on the move. And Vivian's just one of her last 16 now from the three. Dillingham flops. That's a good call by Mai Forsberg. Dillingham trying to draw the fourth foul on Plum. Let's go over to Kaylee Hartung for more on Washington's latest huddle. Well, Pam, Mike Neighbors telling his team, I know you're tired, but you've got to keep running because they're more tired. He said there is no such thing as a bad open shot at this point. He looked right at Kelsey Plum when he said that. Of course he did. <laughs> Kelsey is always the best option. But I have to disagree with that. 
Mississippi State has the fresher legs. They've used more people. And uh, some of the Washington Huskies have been out there playing the whole game. Kelsey Plum now with the free throw line. What a brilliant career she has had. 57 points in her final regular season game against Utah. And we would need a whole lot of time to talk about all the records that she has set while at the University of Washington. And after that free throw, I saw her, you know, just pump her fists and like, come on, we got to get a stop here. Those are good defense. It's only a seven point game. And a foul as Plum drives again towards the basket. Some of the things you can check out on ESPNW.com. The University of Maryland embraces its youngest Terrapin, Ashlyn Barrett. Very inspiring story. How Quinnipiac became a mispronounced Cinderella, and I might have just mispronounced it then. And uh, Kelly Graves in Oregon. Boy, what a team. They will play Maryland tomorrow. Vote for your hand clap hoopla video winner on ESPNW.com. And Kelsey Plum has missed a free throw, something she does very, very rarely. One of her goals was to hit 90% of her free throws this year. And she is just short of that at 89%. You can see Lauren Williams, she's hesitating a little bit. One person that does not hesitate, that's Victoria Vivian. McCowan got the rebound and they got Osahor for the bump from behind. Three fouls on Osahor. Osahor had 13 points in the first half, just four here in the second half. Under three minutes to go in a six point ball game. And again, taking time off the clock. Morgan Williams, smallest player on the floor, big bucket. That was a big time shot. Her first basket, first points of the game. Did not score against DePaul, so she has two points in her last two games. But is so valuable as a point guard. Plum has to elevate over McCowan, who swatted it away. And then they're going to get Osavor for pushing Dillingham behind the play. Tierra McCowan having a fourth quarter for the ages. And this is only a sophomore. That is terrifying if you're anybody else in the <laughs> SEC. I mean, she just swatted it. And that's just a frustration foul right there. 14 fouls against Washington, just three against Mississippi State. 24 and 11 for McCowan, a couple of blocks. Winner gets Baylor or Louisville on Sunday. Shot clock dwindling. William off balance. Tierra McCowan. And she's feeling it. And that was all set up because of the William drive. McDonald got it over to Johnson. Blocked a couple of times by McCowan, who's got a big smile on her face, as well she should. And the Huskies have to foul here. And they do, finally, but after 10 seconds, went off the clock. <laughs> McCowan, we've seen her offense, but look at her defense. And there she goes again on the offensive glass, all set up by that penetration. Braun Osafor over for the help, leaves it wide open for the offensive rebound and putback. Madison Square Garden has the NIT's Final Four, TCU Central Florida. Tonight's second semifinal at 9 on ESPN and watch ESPN 9 Eastern. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Wall-to-wall -wall basketball, best time of the year. You expect Plum, you can see, nice job by Mississippi State denying Plum the ball. Make somebody else beat you. Plum. 
off the back iron, and they're going to get a foul on McDonald for pushing down William. Four on McDonald. And I'll tell you what, Morgan William has done a tremendous, she had five rebounds in the game. She had five at halftime, and that was caused because she boxed out on the defensive end, getting to the free throw line, and it's tough to come back on this team because they shoot the free throw so well. Morgan William, 84%. Now Morgan William, the smallest player on the floor with a huge impact. How about eight rebounds for Itty Bitty, as she is known? Listed at 5'5". Five five. We know that is not true. 5'2", uh, I would think, on a good day, which usually is a good day. Tara McCowan's having a great day. She's having a great day. Look at that smile. In the fourth quarter, McCowan has 20 points. Washington has 12. And we're not counting her rebounds and her blocks yet either. Osavor hits the side of the backboard. And they say it was deflected. So Washington hangs on. I want to welcome those of you who saw Notre Dame eliminate Ohio State, Mississippi State, about to do the same to Washington, a two versus three matchup. In the Oklahoma City region, Kelsey Plum, the most prolific scorer in the history of NCAA women's basketball, about to have her career end. And a monstrous fourth quarter by Tierra McCowan and the rest of Mississippi State. The Bulldogs trailed by two, coming into the fourth. And the folks from Starkville know they're going to hang out for another couple days in OKC. And Mississippi State has just been relentless with their defense. I credit Danielle Dillingham in particular with tremendous defense on Kelsey Plum, just making her work for everything. And Mike Neighbors is about to take out some of his stars. Kelsey Plum gets a hug from Dominique Dillingham and one of the most brilliant basketball players that we have ever seen has her career come to an end. Kelsey with 29 points gets a standing ovation from the people here in Oklahoma City. Osahor comes out as well, the most prolific rebounder in Washington history. But a disappointing ending for the two senior stars for the Huskies. And it's not just about what she's done on the court. It's about the type of ambassador she's been for the game of women's basketball. And she will be highly drafted, if not number one, and we're going to see her play for a long, long time. Mississippi State about to go where they have never gone before, and that is to the Elite Eight. Old friends from their time at the University of Arkansas, Mike Neighbors and Vic Schaefer get together and a monstrous fourth quarter for Tierra McCowan and the rest of the Bulldogs sends them into the Elite Eight where they will play either Baylor or Louisville. And Vic Schaefer's got to be proud of his team. This was a complete team effort. They pounded the ball inside from the beginning, weren't hitting early on. He got onto his post players, and they responded in a big way. 16 points and eight rebounds in the fourth quarter alone for Tierra McCowan. And here we go. Notre Dame going to play the winner of Stanford, Texas in Lexington, Mississippi State on Sunday night will play the winner of our second game between Baylor and Louisville. Boy, Tierra McCowan at 6'7", just a sophomore, was unstoppable in the fourth quarter. She really was, and I, I really believe they wore Osahor down in those first three quarters and then just continued to go to her. If she wasn't getting it from the pass inside, she got on the offensive boards and finished. And Kaylee Hartung has the star of the game, <laughs> McCowan. Tierra, you cannot keep the smile off your face. You had more points than the entire Washington team in the fourth quarter. How do you describe the mentality you took on the court during that period? 
Well, I knew coming into this game, we had to guard Plum and we had to guard Osahor. So just coming in and knowing that I could step up and be that player to go to during the game when we were down on the bye, it's a great feeling. All of women's college basketball has come to know Osahor and Plum. What was it about the defensive approach on them that was able to contain them? Well, knowing that we had to guard the perimeter because they're a good three-point shooting team, and we knew that we couldn't come off too far and help because they can knock down the open shot. So just knowing to be in the right spot at the right time and, be, and being able to recover was all we had to do. You're now taking Mississippi State to its first Elite Eight. How do you describe the emotions of that? It's all for my seniors. My seniors, they built Mississippi State from where it wasn't to where it was now, and just sending them out on the right note is our main goal. Congratulations, Sierra. Thank you. McCowan scored 20 of Mississippi State's 27 points in the fourth quarter, and they advance on to the Elite Eight. Stay tuned for Louisville Baylor, our second semifinal game in the region coming up. But now the NCAA studio update as we go to Maria Taylor, Salon Kelsey Plum, and Chantel Osahor, and hello, Elite Eight for Mississippi State. 